are here with second-hand model Marie Klozowski. So, Marie, can you tell us a little about yourself? Most people know me as Ruheil Kudo. So, Ruheil Kudo, can you tell me about your experience second-hand shopping? I'm very tall and slender compared to most of the world's people. So, the only pants I can ever find are the really expensive ones. Oh. And I found this out when I was not finding anything at normal stores. So we found a secondhand shop near my house. And I was like, mm, let's try it out. It might have some cool stuff for not too much money. Hmm. And we found pants that normally would cost $200 and got them for like 30. Oh, wow. And so ever since, that's what I do is I go to secondhand stores and I buy pants that are my size oh. and don't have to spend outrageous amounts of money. Makes sense. When you go secondhand shopping, like, um, what specifically do you look for? What's your fashion taste? My fashion taste is extremely eclectic. Hmm. A lot of times I go between dressing in almost completely guys' clothes. Sometimes I dress all fancy and fluffy in girls' clothes, so it's, I mostly look at color when I'm shopping, and I, I pick my favorite colors, like purples and blues and blacks, of course, and see what kind of looks interesting and unique. Hmm. I have a really unique sense of style. Uh, a lot of it's uh, actually based on things like anime and uh, medieval. Hmm renaissance type styles. Getting into like the, the anime aspect of your interest, you also cosplay. I do cosplay. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I have done one cosplay that just about everyone who's ever watched Adult Swim has a chance of knowing. Uh, I cosplay the character Envy from the show Full Metal Alchemist. Um, what, what got you into cosplay? I knew a few friends who cosplayed, but it started out uh, with working at the Renaissance Festival. Oh. So I'd have to go in costume because I sold like food items as a fundraiser for my robotics team that I was a part of. Oh. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of brainy stuff in there. <laughs> and um, so I, I was uh, compiling clothes for Renaissance garb. So cool skirts and dresses and corsets, the whole nine yards. Nice. And uh, a bunch of my friends were telling me about uh, different conventions that they went to, like JFAX here in Grand Rapids and Yomacon down in Detroit. And they asked me if I wanted to come along. Hmm. So I said, why not? It combines anime with dressing up, which I've always loved since I was a little kid. I went one time and they haven't been able to stop me from going since. <laughs> Yes. How, do, how do you make or get those outfits? Well, the, the easy cheating way is always you can order them online. Oh, uh, yeah. But Just those are it. usually pretty expensive. So one of the things I do personally is I go to thrift shops, Salvation Army, and other secondhand stores, and I find clothes that are very similar to what I'm looking for, usually a little on the big side so I can manipulate them. And then I use my grandma's sewing machine and I, you know, look at my uh, reference pictures and cut them out a little differently and sew them back up to do whatever I need them to. Oh, sweet. So you're pretty good at organizing and customization when it comes to, like, picking apparel. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. I usually customize, at least to some extent, everything I wear. I kind of see, like, even, even the hair is kind of... <laughs> custom yeah coordinated oh yeah so is that um is that like um was that planned or a little bit a little bit yeah <laughs> this is this is my newest most favorite hairstyle hmm. so i decided i like the color i just got a new shirt recently that had the same color i have my wonderful mermaid scales that are pretty close so hmm. like let's run with it so kind of like a moderate cosplay. Kind of. Kind of, but still like... I was, I was about this close to adding elf ears. Ah, just because I felt like it and I have some. Just to some. top it off. 
Yeah. Hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your interest in modeling in general? Sure. Um, okay. Ever since I was a little kid, people always thought I was older than I was. I was probably four when I was at uh, the Dixie Stampede show, oh. and uh, they were looking for kids seven to ten to ride the ostrich around, and they asked me if I wanted to ride the ostrich. I didn't ride the ostrich. Uh. I was terrified of it. <laughs> but um, they always... You know, thought I looked so good for my age that I was so tall and slender that I would make the perfect model. And when I was little, I had the opportunity to start modeling. But I had heard all of these different things about how models had to starve themselves to stay in the right shape, and they had, you know, really strict ways of living. They had to do this, they had to do that. And I wasn't super interested at the time. Mm -hmm. So I told them, I, you know, I told my parents, I don't want to be in a model just because, you know, I didn't want to get forced into that lifestyle. Definitely. Especially when I have, you know, the brains. I was going to a very prestigious university for an engineering degree at one point. Oh. So. I feel like that point should be revisited real quick. So about the <laughs> quote unquote brainy stuff, <laughs> how brainy? Um, I took three AP courses in high school and the tests are graded from a one to a five. I got fours on two of them and I got a five on one of them. Oh wow. And I took AP biology, psychology, and calculus. Huh. Calculus is the one I got a five on. Okay. I went to Kettering University for a while, and I made Dean's List almost every term I was there. So, very, very... I was on a robotics team in high school where we built a 120-pound robot to play games. The, the robots aspect, that sounds pretty interesting. Can you, do you care to expound on that a little bit? What it is, is there's a... It's a group called First Robotics. It's worldwide, and every year it's a challenge. They have different levels. Uh, I was in it in high school, middle school, and elementary school. And I did Lego robotics first, so you build a little Lego robot to play a game. It had to complete little tasks in a certain amount of time. And um, then when I went to the bigger FRC, first robotics competition, it was a 120 pound robot. It had certain uh, height restrictions, uh, size restrictions, weight restrictions, everything. and. We had, I think, six weeks to build this robot from scratch wow. to compete it. And you are on, uh, there's two teams of three robots piece, and you had to play different games. So one year we had to take inner tubes and hang them on this tree looking thing. We had to play soccer with these robots. We had to do just all sorts of cool things. Wow. We had um, one challenge was called lunacy and the floor that the robots had to drive on and the wheels we had to use to drive on it made it uh, made the robot react like it was on the moon with wow. the traction of being in lunar gravity that is some very awesome stuff <laughs> what are your thoughts going into the competition see is how I'm not really familiar with the whole world of modeling and I'm just starting to kind of get back into the idea of being, you know, pretty cool. I'm just going to try and pick something creative mm. and just let people see just how creative I can be with, with stuff that people didn't want anymore. Mm. Take things that were people's trash, basically, and turn them into things that people would actually be like, wow, where did you get that? Mm. What do you hope to overall take away from the competition? I kind of hope to, you know, get a feel for what, you know, different people have the ideas of when it comes to fashion, mm -hmm. to, you know, see my competitors yeah. and see what their ideas are and just find some cool stuff. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. Well, best of luck to you in the competition. Well, thank you. Yep.